جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله دلني على عمل إذا فعلته يحبني الله ويحبني الناس. A man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said, O Messenger of Allah, guide me or direct me to do an action that if I do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love me and the people will love me. This shows us that, number one, that as human beings we have a natural desire to be loved by other people. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be loved by other people. It's natural that as human beings we are madniyun bitabi. We are communal creatures by nature. We share our space with other people and we like to know that we are liked by other people. But he didn't just ask about the love of other people. He asked, guide me to do an action that if I do it, Allah will love me and people will love me. People are in three categories here. There's some from amongst people who only care about the love of other people. And they could care less about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man iltamis ridha nas bi sakhatillah That whoever seeks to please people at the expense of angering Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will leave him to the mercy of the people. Wa man iltamis ridha Allah that whoever seeks to please Allah at the expense of angering people, then Allah will be sufficient for you. Allah is enough for you. So you have some people who seek the pleasure of other people and they don't care about how that affects their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ عَدُوٌ لَكُمْ فَاحْذَرُوهُمْ O you who believe from amongst your children and your wives are enemies to you, be aware of them. They will make you compromise your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have a needy nature that sometimes as men we would be willing to risk and jeopardize our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to please them. Allah is telling us to be aware of that. So you have some people who go after seeking the pleasure of other people, validation of other people at the expense of angering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then on the flip side of that, you have on the other extreme of that, you have people who seek to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they anger the people. And what I mean by that in a, in a negative way, not in a positive way. You have some people who believe that they have a great relationship with God, a great relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they can care less about how they treat other people. The only thing that they are concerned is that I get up at night and pray, I establish all of my five prayers, I make my sunnah prayers, I'm in the masjid all the time. However, they treat people like crap. Because they believe that the only thing that matters to them is their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Failing to realize that our relationship with one another is an extension of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamahum ar-Rahman irham man fil ard yarhamakum man fil sama Ar-Rahimuna, those who are merciful to other people, yarhamahum ar-Rahman, the most merciful will be merciful to them. Irham man fil ard, be merciful to those that are on the earth. Yarhamakum man fil sama, and the one that is above the heavens will be merciful to you. You see how that works. Be merciful to people who are on the earth. Doesn't matter who they are. Ala asnaf in nas. Doesn't matter whether they are non-Muslim, Muslim. It doesn't matter who they are. Munafiq. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was gentle, merciful with everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ 
And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to all of mankind. Not just to Muslims, but merciful to all of mankind. And fi'lan, the Prophet ﷺ was merciful to everyone that came in contact with him. Which is what made his character so profound, so impactful on the lives of people. People accepted Islam and they never even met the Prophet ﷺ. It just reached them about his character and about the way that he was. And people were so intrigued and so drawn to him and they never even met him. Subhanallah. So he said, guide me to do an action that if I do it, Allah will love me and people will love me. So you have people on two ends of the spectrum. Those who are only concerned about their relationship with people and they don't care how that affects their relationship with Allah. And then you have those who only care about their relationship with Allah and doesn't care how that relationship affects people. You cannot use your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a means of dismissing people, making people feel like they are less than you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Don't sanctify yourselves. فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't sanctify yourself. Don't believe that you are self-righteous. هُوَ أَعْلَمُ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى Allah knows who fears Him. You don't have to use the weight of your self-righteousness on the people to make yourself feel better. Allah already knows who truly fears Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you don't have to act like I fear Allah. Allah already knows the hearts of the people. Allah knows who fears Him, who truly, who truly knows Him and truly regards Him and reveres Him and loves Him and fears Him. You don't have to display that in your actions amongst people. You don't have to do that. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he saw a man walking, you know, with, you know, raggedy clothes and walking with his head down because this was seen as a sign of righteousness. Sometimes you run into people and they're like, Assalamu alaikum. It's like, you don't have to do that. Okay, I get it, you're righteous. I get it. You don't, but you don't have to do that. So when Umar saw the man walking with his head down, Umar took his stick and he smacked the man in his neck. And he said, Irfa ra'sak. فَإِنَّ التَّقْوَ فِي قَلْبِكْ لَا فِي رأسك. He told him, he smacked him in his neck and he told him, lift your head up. He said, piety is in your heart, not in your neck. I don't care how low you walk with your head down. That doesn't make you more righteous. هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Allah knows best who fears Him. You don't have to act like I fear Allah amongst people. Allah truly knows whether or not you fear Him or not. And then you have those right there in the middle. خَيْرَ النَّاسِ أَنَّمَتُ الْأَوْسَطِ Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, the best of people are those who follow the middle course. لا إله هؤلاء ولا إله هؤلاء Right there in the middle. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا And likewise, we have made you an ummah that takes the middlemost course. Always be mutawasit. Always be in the middle every time. Find yourself in the middle every time. Not on the end, this end of one extreme, and not on the other extreme. Bain al ifrat wa tafrit, right there in the middle, al wasat. That is the best place to be at every single juncture of your life. Whether in religion, whether in deen, or whether in dunya, the best place to be always, if you leave here with nothing this morning, the best place to always find yourself is right in the middle. Not of one extreme and not of the other. And then there are those who are concerned about their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there are those that are concerned about their relationship with other people. I want Allah to love me. And I also want people to love me and respect me. This is the middle course. So he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, Dullani ala amalin idha fa'altuhu wa idha amiltu bihi yuhibbuni Allah wa yuhibbuni an nas direct me to do an action that if I do it, Allah will love me and the people will love me. Listen to what the Prophet's response was. And his response was always in the middle. SubhanAllah. Every single time you look at the Prophet's response, his response was always in the middle. Never too much to the right, never too much to the left. He was a people person. He understood people. 
he understood people. He said, مَا مِن نَبِيًّا إِلَّا كَانَ رَاعِيَ الْغَنَمْ There was no prophet except that he used to be a sheep herder. He used to be a shepherd. Dealing with sheep was in preparation to teach them how to deal with sheep. You understand? Sheep, and then you have sheep, people who act like sheep. So sometimes you got to yell at the sheep to get them to move in a particular area. This is exactly the way the Prophet ﷺ dealt with mankind. So the Prophet ﷺ responded, he said, Is head fi dunya yuhibbukallah? Stay away from the dunya and Allah will love you. Stay away from the dunya and Allah will love you. Is head fi dunya kun zahidan ani dunya. Stay away from the dunya and Allah will love you. Stay away from the dunya doesn't mean don't enjoy your share or your portion of this world. As I said in the khutbah, as long as you stay in the parameters of what is halal, then enjoy. Is had fi dunya, meaning do not let your heart, your soul become attached to this dunya. This dunya, mata'un qalil, is only a temporary enjoyment. Every pleasure that you experience in this life is temporary. Money is temporary. Your wives are temporary. Your children are temporary. Your job is temporary. Everything, your sneakers, you get that feeling when you buy a new pair of shoes, new pair of sneakers, temporary. You buy a new car. Some people buy a new car every single year, chasing that temporary enjoyment. It's all temporary. So do not become attached to the dunya. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created here, He created for us. But Allah created you for Him. You belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do not belong to this world. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the hadith al-Qudsi, Ya ibn Adam, inni khalaqtuka li nafsi, wa khalaqtu kulla shay'in laka, fa bi haqqi alayka an la tashtaghil bima khalaqtuhu lak, amman khalaqtuka lahu. O oh, child of Adam, inni khalaqtuka li nafsi. I created you for me. And I created everything else for you. Everything, the sun, the shams, wal qamar, layl, wal nahar, children, everything was put here for our use. Everyone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in your life right now was for your benefit. Just like you being in somebody else's life is a benefit for their life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you for Him. فَبِحَقِّ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ لَا تَشْتَغِلْ And based upon my right over you, by creating you for me, do not preoccupy yourself with the things that I created for you instead of the one whom I created you for. I created you for me. We belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ To Allah we belong and to Allah we return. We belong to Allah. Do not allow your soul, do not allow yourselves to become attached to this world. Is head fi dunya yuhibbuk Allah. Stay away from, detach yourself from this dunya. Divorce this dunya. This dunya wants to marry you. Divorce it. And leave your heart mutafarriqa lillahi jalla wa ala. Leave your heart free to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you become attached to this, attached to that, as the scholars they say, له, Your love of a thing could cause you to worship it. When we start to attach ourselves to things and people of this world, it compromises our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about a man in a relationship with a woman and he's so compromised. Why well, You don't have to go to the masjid to pray. You can pray here at home. I don't want you to leave. Okay, and I'll just pray at home. Oh, this apartment is not working for us. Let's go buy a house. Well, you know, engaging in haram is, you know, uh, engaging in riba is haram. It's okay. We, we need a home. We, you know, what are we supposed to do? We have children. Okay, right? Compromise after compromise after compromise. No, no limits. And then you ruin your relationship, jeopardize your relationship with Allah. Is head fi dunya Allah. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Izhad fima indan nas 
الناس. Stay away from the things that people love and the people will love you. Don't compete with people in the things that they love. People love this world. They love this dunya. You can have it. I'm not going to compete with you in that. There's some from amongst Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation who He favored them with wealth. And there's some who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never going to give you wealth. We will strive over and over throughout our lives trying to be wealthy as the next man and we never get it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and I'll end here. He said, إِنَّ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مَنْ لَا يُصْلِحُ إِمَانَهُ إِلَّا الْغِنَى فَلَوْ أَفْقَرْتُهُ لَا أَفْسَدَهُ ذَلِكَ وَإِنَّ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مَنْ لَا يُصْلِحُ إِمَانَهُ إِلَّا الْفَقَرْ فَلَوْ أَغْنَيْتَهُ لَا أَفْسَدَهُ ذَلِكَ إِنِّي لَأُدَبِّرُ أَمْرَ عِبَادِي بِعِلْمِ بِقُلُوبِهِمْ وَأَنَا عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that from amongst my servants are those who nothing would be good for their faith except to be wealthy, to be rich. If I was to make them poor, it would destroy them. لَأَفْسَدَهُمْ ذَارِ It would corrupt them, it would destroy them. So Allah keeps them wealthy, keeps them rich for reasons that are beyond what we can understand. We look at a person and we say, he doesn't pray, he doesn't fast, and look at his house, look at his wife, look at his children, look at his cars, mashallah. He doesn't pray, he doesn't fast, doesn't give sadaqah, but yet Allah still keeps blessing him. Me, miskeen, I do everything, I pray, I get up in the morning, I go to the masjid for fajr, yet I'm still struggling. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He administers the affairs of, the, of His servants based upon His knowledge of their hearts. And He is alimun khabir. Allah knows what He's doing. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقُ وَهُوَ لَطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ Shouldn't He know best? And He is the one that created you. And He is latif, al-khabir. Allah knows what He's doing. And His wisdom is beyond what we can understand. لَهُوَ إِكْمَةُ بَالِغَ Hikmah, wisdom that is beyond what we could ever understand. So we sit and look at a person and we say, why does Allah keep blessing him with this? And make no mistake about it, giving Allah, giving someone something from the dunya doesn't necessarily mean it's a blessing. It's not necessarily a blessing. Especially if they are upon disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not a blessing. He said, and some from amongst my servants, nothing would be good for their faith except to be poor. And there's some from amongst my servants who nothing would be good for their faith except to be poor. Doesn't necessarily mean poor poverty, you don't have anything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you at a certain place. You ever realize that year after year after year you venture off into this business and you venture off into that and they all collapse and it doesn't seem like you're able to get out of this space financially. Why can't I just move and transition to the next level? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you there. Allah keeps you exactly where He needs you to be so that it'll be good for your faith. Allah doesn't want you there. The Prophet sallallahu said, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدٍ مَنَعَهُ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا تَمْنَعُونَ الْمَرْضَ مِنْ أَنْ يَشْرَبْ مِنْ كُوبِكُمْ مِنْ أَكْوَابِكُمْ That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, He prevents you from the dunya, like one of you would stop a sick person from drinking from your cup. Subhanallah. مَنَعَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Allah prevents you from going, venturing so far out into the world. Just like one of you would prevent a sick person from drinking from your cup. As a mercy, as a rahmah for you. Meanwhile, we're blaming God. Why me? Why aren't you not enriching me? Why are you not giving me more, right? Meanwhile, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to save you from destroying yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, God is trying to save you from destroying yourself. Yet we turn around and we blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَنْ قَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَكُورُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا Allah says, and when we restrict your wealth, we say, أَهَانًا Allah is humiliating me. Why is God doing this to me? Why is He not giving me wealth? He gave fulan and fulan and fulan wealth. Why not me? 
curse God, curse you. Why? Right? As the Jews said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَقَالَ الْيَهُودُ يَدُ اللَّهِ مَضْلُولَ And the Jews, they said, God's hands are closed. Meaning, he clenches his hands. Meaning, he's stingy. يَدُ اللَّهِ مَغْلُولَ Allah is stingy. He doesn't give us from his bounty. You mean words that should have been written in gold. SubhanAllah, this is one of the ways that you know that he was a messenger. He was given what is called uh, the, the ability to say small phrases, but the meanings behind which are just so profound. Meanwhile, today, we have 280-something characters. We went from 140, and we got to stretch the characters on Twitter so people can get their point across, right? In 280-some-odd characters, right? 140 characters, right? Instead of restricting the characters, they have expanded it because in this age, and this day and time, people have so much to say and are really not saying anything. <laughs> the best speech is what is short and to the point. وسبحانك ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته